Good morning and uh, welcome here to, uh, yeah, a very autumnal morning, you might say. Um, it's a pleasure to, to, to for, for me to kind of do this with you today. This is slightly different. I've got to do things like uh, school running. I've got, to, well, I've got to do school running today, so uh, I've had to record the service. Uh, hopefully this has all worked okay and that you're watching this by um, nine o'clock. That's the hope anyway. Um, Today, 4th of September, is a day where we remember Berinius, uh, Berinus, who was Bishop of Dorchester. Um, my, one of my colleagues from college was recently licensed, and um, yeah, recently licensed um, as a priest by the Bishop of Dorchester. And I thought, well, oh, she was in Gloucester, I didn't realise she was moving all the way down to Dorset, but it's not. It's Dorchester in Oxfordshire. He was the Apostle, apostle of Wessex, 650. So Berinus was, was consecrated a missionary by, by Bishop of Asterius, Archbishop by, excuse me, let me start again. Berinus was consecrated a missionary bishop by Asterius, Archbishop of Milan and Genoa. Probably of Germanic stock, he was sent by Pope Honorius I to evangelise the remote and unreached areas of England. Berinius landed in Wessex in 634, and on his journey north, he encountered the West Saxons. Berinius found them so pagan that he decided not to continue his journey northwards, but to stay and evangelise them instead. Berinius was greatly aided in his evangelism by the approach of King Sign Gills of the West Saxons who asked him to teach him the ways of Christianity. Berinus, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing this wrong each time differently, so I do apologise, eventually baptised Zeneglis again, said it twice, two different ways, and two of his children. Zeneglis' daughter married the Christian king Oswald of Northumbria, and the two kings jointly gave Berinus the town of Dorchester in what is today Oxfordshire. As, he is, as, as his Episcopal seat, Berinus duly settled at Dorchester, which was heavily influenced by a Roman population and style, and made his headquarters there, engaging in a mission to the surrounding areas. He eventually built the first church at Winchester. When the Diocese of Dorchester was divided, was divided Winchester became the centre of the new diocese. Berinus was a missionary bishop, initially under the jurisdiction of the Bishop of Genoa, but consequently, he paid little attention, uh, and consequently, he paid little attention to the Archbishop of Canterbury or to the central ecclesiastical structures of the county, country he came to evangelise. Bede described Berinus as a good and just man who, in carrying out his duties, was guided rather by an inborn love of virtue than by what he read in books. So it's slightly ironic that we read about him in a book. I would say a local man, but not. Um, did some of the work locally. And again, one of the people who um, we can be thankful for, for, for being here today and to know the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's have a moment as we recognise that we are in Almighty God's presence. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts at Meribah on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put 
me to the proof. Though they had seen my work. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their heart. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the daylight open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. We're now going to use the words of Psalm 139. It comes up quite a lot during lectionary, in the sorry, in the lectionary, which is good because I know that for many of you it is quite special and um, poignant psalm. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make my, if I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, even the darkness is no sorry, even the night even the darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For yourself created for you yourself created my innermost part. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all, all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God, that the bloodthirsty might depart from me. They speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do I not oppose those, O Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies also. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any way of wickedness in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way, that trusting in your presence in this world, we may be on this life and still be with you where you are alive and reign for ever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Um, some of you may know I, I'm, I work for the council and uh, one of the things that I have done in the past, I haven't done for a while, but one of the things I've done in the past is I've um, uh, I've run a course, so I've, I've done a personal development course called Goals. And part of that is about affirmations, things that you say to yourself. Our brains are very literal. 
has been created with very literal brain. If you tell it one thing, it will uh, it will believe it. Um, so if you tell yourself that you are rubbish and a failure, um, you won't disappoint yourself. If you tell yourself that you are wonderfully and fearfully made, and a child of God, a beloved child of God, and you keep telling yourself that, and you say that to yourself, and you read those scriptures as truth, then you realise that you are fearfully, wonderfully made. You are a beloved child of God. That's a right affirmation. For me, um, that was my affirmation. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. We uh, now come to um, our reading from Acts, Acts chapter 10, beginning to read at the first verse. And the word of God. God's power in the world, into the wider world, um, beyond just, just the Jewish people, and, and God has always spoken to people beyond the Jewish people. Uh, I think of people like Ruth. Um, but it's this now that early church is now really starting to spread. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon at about three o'clock he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of the Lord coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. He stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? He answered, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon, who is called Peter, he is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had left, he called his two, of his two of his slaves and a devout soldier from the ranks of those who served him, and after telling them everything, he sent them to the Joppa. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of all-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again, a second time, when God has made what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That message that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we are beloved children of God, is a message for all. It 
is a message for everyone and not just one set of people, not just for the Jewish race, not just for um, not just for the Church of England. This is for all people. It's not even just for us. It is for everyone. We are beloved children of God and Cornelius, centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called, a foreigner. He recognised that and he saw that and he responded in his life. And I think this is really kind of quite key and quite a special part of the Bible, reminding us of the universal love of God. Come to our responses. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Come to the benediction. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. We now come to <clears throat> excuse me. We now come to a time of prayer and intercession uh, being recorded. Um, I'm afraid I can't respond to any comments um, because um, I probably won't be by the computer at that point. So please, as we come together now for the, our time of intercession, let's have a moment of quiet and silence as we bring before God the situation and those folk that we particularly want God to come close to this day. Let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving make our request to God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the whole world. We pray for the honouring of human rights, for the relief of the oppressed. And we give you thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. We give you thanks for all that is wonderful in our lives. But we bring our broken, broken world to you, Lord, seeking your forgiveness and seeking your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for Viv and Lee, our bishop. For the life of our communities. For the life of our parishes. For the life of our town and our nation. Pray, Lord, that your church, your people here, us, we pray, dear Father, that we will be shining light in the world around us. We give you thanks for the gift of your word, for the grace of the sacrament, and the fellowship of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community and for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for those especially who are looking to protect us and to keep us safe. For those that are looking after the vulnerable and the ill. For those seeking wisdom as to know what best to do to cope with this virus and to cope with the challenges that it brings. We pray for the young and the elderly. We pray for families. And we pray for those who are alone. We give thanks for human skill and creativity. And all that reveals your loveliness and your wonder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need this day, for the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give you thanks for human love and friendship and all that you have blessed us with that enriches our daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of, of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merit and mediation of Jesus Christ, our, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. He is indeed a wonderful collect, as Alvin mentioned the other day. Very long sentence there. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Sorry, excuse me. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope this video has worked okay and I, I hope everything was uh, loaded in time and there were no issues or problems. If there were, I really do apologise. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, things being well, live uh, from the same spot um, for morning prayer. I think tomorrow we're going to revert back. Um, we'll revert back to the Book of Common Prayer for this Saturday. Um, we haven't had a, we haven't had a, a BCP. 
key service all the way through August. So we'll revert back on Saturday morning um, for this Saturday. We'll revert back to the Cup of Common Prayer. In the meantime, may the Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. 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 Have a great day. See you soon.